Hey, what's going on everyone? Today I'll be covering eight must know tips when buying dog food. Believe it or not, there's a ton of misleading marketing in the dog food industry. And while you think you might be 100% sure you're buying what your pet needs, these tips might make you reconsider. Be sure to watch the whole way through as this small time investment can make a huge impact on your dog's health. Generally speaking, these tips mainly cover premium options that run a few dollars per pound of food. Think Origin, Rachel Ray, Blue Buffalo, and brands in that price range. Anyways, let's jump into it. Tip number one, don't look at the pictures, look at the ingredients. It's easy to get distracted looking at the fancy packaging full of chicken, fruits, vegetables, and the happy dog running through a field. Most of what you see on the front is a marketing ploy. Here's why. Pet foods in the United States are regulated by the FDA, and generally speaking, when it comes to the images on the packaging, the rules are pretty open. While manufacturers have to follow basic guidelines, such as listing the ingredients, the distributor, net quantity, etc., there's room for the rules to be bent. For example, look at what appears on the front of this package. Lots of fruits, vegetables, meats, etc. This leads the consumer to believe the food is packed full of only healthy fruits and vegetables and none of the other bad stuff. Well, that's obviously false, at least for a lot of dog foods. The ingredients are listed from greatest to least. So the first item you see is what makes up the largest percentage of the food. The second item is what makes up the second largest. For example, if the ingredients listed are chicken, sweet potatoes, lentils, the percentages could be 30, 17, and 15%. Then any ingredients that make up less than 15% are listed after. So while you might see mounds of spinach, carrots, and other nutrient-rich items, these can sometimes make up less than 1% of the overall mix. Tip number two, look for whole ingredients. By no means do I consider myself an expert in dog food, However, I've spent way too much time this past month doing research on what is considered safe and nutritious for your dog. Along with this, I've been diving through the FDA's and AFCO's guidelines and regulations and combing through pages and pages of information. Here's what you need to know. Everything in your pet's food is generally considered safe and has a purpose, although the effectiveness of each ingredient does not have to meet a certain minimum threshold. For example, corn versus sweet potatoes. Both act as a carbohydrate source, but asking which is better is difficult. Corn is likely a cheaper ingredient and is more attractive to the manufacturers in this aspect, but maybe not so much for you or your dog. Let's take a step back for a moment. Since dogs don't have the opportunity to vary their food source, they have to rely on their owners to provide them a complete and balanced diet. Go to the store, buy nearly anything off the shelf, and in every bite of dog food, it's considered a complete source. Meaning it has everything your dog needs to grow, live, and just generally be healthy. So in every bite, your dog needs protein, carbs, fats, vitamins, minerals, etc. Minimum and maximum standards are set by AFCO. For nearly all manufacturers, cost of materials or ingredients is the largest expense. If a manufacturer can save a few pennies by using corn over sweet potatoes, then making up the nutrient deficiency with an artificial additive, then the savings is multiplied over millions of pounds of food, thus increasing profit margins. This is a bit of an oversimplified example, but is also part of the reason there's so many different options out there. Each recipe is different and there's tons of room for variance. The bottom line is, the more whole ingredients, the better. One new dog food company that is big on nutritious and whole food ingredients, backed by some big names, including the Fresh Prince himself, Will Smith, along with Nas, Halsey, and even Michael Strahan is Jinx. Jinx Dog Food is a modern brand formulated for the modern dog. Your dog isn't a wolf and you aren't a caveman. Your pup doesn't have to spend all day searching for food or recovering from long periods without food. Jinx is a smarter formula for the dog that goes on daily walks and sleeps while you're at work. I've been feeding my dog Reese the chicken brown rice avocado formula for several weeks now and I've noticed a significant difference in the softness of his coat and his overall energy levels. It makes sense too. I was feeding him the Costco brand food and after looking at the ingredients on Jinx, there is a significant difference. If you want to learn more about Jinx and if it's appropriate for your dog, I've included a link below. Anyways, let's get on with the rest of the video. <laughs> Tip 
Tip number three, be weary of other YouTube videos. Again, I don't consider myself an expert, but I do want to scrutinize the reliability and validity of things I see online. Two common things you'll see on YouTube include a vinegar test and the 1% salt divider rule. The vinegar test is meant to show the digestibility of food in your dog's stomach by replicating stomach acid. Here's the problems I see with it. One, your dog is usually up and walking around, not sitting as still as those glasses on camera. Two, your dog has teeth and saliva that helps to break down the food before it enters the stomach. And three, your dog's stomach has muscles that help to move uh, the pre-digested food around for, for the breakdown. These tests are far from realistic, even if the pH is set correctly, um, in my opinion. In regards to the 1% salt divider rule, I was having a tough time finding any information online. There's all sorts of websites that refer to this, but none link a credible source back to AFCO or the FDA. Here's what I found on an AFCO document. Now I'm not going to sit here and read this, because um, it's really only a, a short paragraph, uh, but it's confusing, right? My, my formal chemistry education stopped not long after high school, so maybe I'm reading this wrong, but I do not see a maximum set on these guidelines for sodium or chloride, just a ratio. So I contacted the FDA. Here's the response I received. Again, not a whole lot of clarity. For the time being, I'm skeptical, and as of publishing this video, I'm still seeking out additional information. And not to be hypocritical, but scrutinize my video too. Yes, I am endorsing a specific brand of dog food, and I do receive a small commission if you use my link to purchase. But this is for all the dog foods listed in the description. Am I biased? Of course I'm a bit biased. I'm not making these videos and doing all of this research just to do research. So even though the benefit is small, I want to make a little bit of a return on my time investment. That's why I have all of these links set up below. Besides, Reese gets more treats and toys when I put links uh, up that people buy through. It doesn't cost you anything extra, but I might receive a buck or two for referring the sale. There's no point in lying or modifying information to try and get you to buy one food over the other. The monetary benefit on my end is negligible. Long story short, take everything with a grain of salt. Spend your time doing your own research and remember that every dog is unique. Know something I don't? Please comment below and include a reliable source rather than just some anecdotal evidence. Tip number four, check the recall list. The FDA releases recalls for all dog and cat foods. While these recalls are specific to single brands, product lines, and batches, you can use them to gauge the trustworthiness of a brand. Although use caution with your judgment. These recalls are voluntary. For example, if there are brands that consistently appear on the recall list, you can look at this one of two ways. You could say a brand is staying proactive and taking the appropriate cautionary measures uh, when there is reason to believe a batch may need to be recalled. On the flip side, a brand may be publishing a recall only because the monetary loss from legal disputes and other repercussions outweighs what it would cost to simply remove the food from shelves. Oftentimes, it's some combination of all of those factors. Most manufacturers have some sort of routine quality testing, which is most likely what initiates these recalls. Others may be the result of field complaints where quality testing did not catch the bad batch. Just remember to see what the recalls are for. A reoccurring problem signals to me that management may not be taking care of problems with personnel or processes to ensure food is safe. Tip number five, grains aren't all bad. If you walk into any pet food store, you'll find plenty of options advertising grain-free. Is there any benefit to grain-free? There are some, and there's plenty of other videos that cover grain-free diets more in detail. But the main reason is you're typically buying a more nutrient-dense product when it's grain-free. Most lower-end and economic dog food options have their first or second ingredient as cornmeal or something similar. Don't count out all grains as bad though. Certain grains like whole grains are a good source of complex carbs that are a part of a healthy diet. Unless your dog has a grain allergy, some grains won't hurt. Most modern dog foods use sweet potatoes, vegetables, and other ingredients that contain more vitamins and minerals with a similar amount of carbs. Tip number six, go the DIY route or try a 50-50 blend. If you're having trouble finding a store-bought food that works, try going the homemade route. While it takes some time and can get pricey, this gives you the peace of mind of knowing what exactly goes in your dog's food. 
If it's too expensive or you're limited on time, you can always make a half homemade, half store-bought mix. In fact, this may be how you want to start, especially if you're switching over to a homemade mix uh, from a store-bought mix. There are plenty of recipes online you can find uh, that meet all of your dog's nutrient and caloric needs. Tip number seven, work with your vet. Your vet might be able to save you a lot of time. If your dog has a food allergy, your vet may be able to test for that so you don't have to run through trial and error with so many different foods or recipes. Talk with your vet about your concerns and possible solutions. Tip number eight. Dog food isn't everything related to your pet's health. Generally speaking, when people are concerned with what their dog is eating, they're concerned because they want their dog to have a high quality, happy, and long life. Don't forget that while their food is a big part of their life, so is adequate exercise and love and attention. Be aware of the issues that are common with your dog's breed. Doing what you can today to help mitigate and prevent these issues in the future will likely make your dog's life um, a lot better in the long run. Doing what you can today to help mitigate or prevent these issues uh, will probably make a greater difference in your dog's overall happiness than what they're eating today. If you made it to the end of this video, thank you for watching the entire way through. Be sure to visit thinkjinx.com, linked in the description and comments below, as they provided Reese some treats and dog food for him to try out, which he and I ended up liking. Not that I ate dog food, but seeing that Reese likes it makes me happy too. Anyways, if you like what I'm doing here, please be sure to like the video and subscribe to my channel for future videos. Thanks for watching, and until next time, we'll see you later.